Hello everyone, welcome to the video on doubly linked list by IntelliPath. As the term itself suggests, doubly linked list is nothing but the thing connected from two ends. This is one of the foundational concepts that you will go through while learning doubly linked list in your DSA course. And today, throughout this video, we are going to explain this concept in a much simpler and deeper way. But before we dive into the session, I would like to request you to enable both the subscribe button and bell icon for IntelliPath YouTube channel so that you won't miss out any updates coming from our team. Let's start with today's agenda. Our first agenda is what is doubly linked list in C. Then we'll see how memory representation of doubly linked list works. After that, we will cover the syntax of doubly linked list and finally, we will discuss the different operations on doubly linked list. Before we start our topic, let's have a quick recap about what is array and what is singly linked list. An array is a fundamental data structure in programming which holds a fixed size collection of elements of similar data types. Let's take an example for better understanding. Here we have created an array of integer data types which contains the element 1, 2, 5, 13 and 8. Here point to notice is that we cannot add char or float data type in this list like we cannot add 1.1 or hello in this list. Now let's explore how the array is represented. We represent arrays in which all the elements are adjacent to each other. Here 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 are called indices which always start from 0. Like we can take the real life example. If in a bucket you have variety of different fruits like apple, banana, orange then in this bucket you cannot add anything apart from fruits such as vegetables. That's all about array. Now let's look at the definition of linked list. A linked list is a linear data structure in which elements are not stored at contiguous memory location. The elements in a linked list are linked using pointers. Now we'll see how linked list work. In a linked list, elements are not adjacent to each other in the memory. Instead, they are dynamically allocated in the memory as individual nodes. And these nodes are connected through references or links. Let's try to visualize the concept for better clarity. This whole container is called node, which is further divided into two parts. One contains data and other contains memory address of next node, where memory address of next node is simply known as next. Now we'll see how linked list is located in the memory. Here, each node, for example, n1, n2, n3, and n4 stores data. In the next of n1, the memory address of n2 is stored. Similarly, in the next of n2, the memory address of n3 is stored and so on. The next of last node, for example n4, is null, indicating the end of the linked list. Additionally, when creating a linked list, we define a variable called head that stores the memory address of linked list. Head serves as a starting point for traversing through the linked list. With these basics in mind, let's move to our main agenda that is doubly linked list in C. What is doubly linked list? Doubly linked list is nothing but a linked list which traverses in both directions, unlike singly linked list which traverses in only one direction. Each node in a doubly linked list contains three parts, previous which contains the address of previous node, data which contains the actual data and next which contains the address of next node. This bidirectional traversal provides flexibility. Now let's look at the definition of doubly linked list. A doubly linked list is a chain of elements where each element points to both its previous and next elements, enabling efficient traversal in both directions. Now moving to our next agenda that is memory representation in doubly linked list. Let's take an example and understand the memory representation in doubly linked list. So consider three elements to be inserted in the list where each node contains the data part and two address part of the previous and the next node. The address of the first node is stored in a special node called head. Let's try to visualize the memory representation in a doubly linked list. The next of first node contains 2016 which is the address of second node. The previous of first node is null because there is no node before it. The previous of second node contains 2000 and the next contains 2022 which is the address of third node. The previous of third node contains 2016 and its next is null because it's the last node. The data value are 10, 20 and 30 for the first, second and third nodes respectively. Now I hope the memory representation in doubly linked list is clear. 
Now moving to our next agenda that is syntax of a doubly linked list. Here we created a structure using a struct keyword followed by a structure named node. Within the curly braces we declared three members, an integer named data and two pointers pointing to previous and next node. Let's execute a simple code on a doubly linked list to understand in a better way. Here we have created a structure named node. It contains three members, data to store the value of node, previous to store the address of previous node and next to store the address of next node. After this we have a function named create node that takes an integer value as a parameter and returns a pointer to a newly created node. Inside the function, memory is dynamically allocated for a new node using the malloc function. The data member of the node is set to the input value and both the previous and the next pointers are initialized to null. Finally, the function returns the pointer to a newly created node. Then comes the display list, function that takes a pointer to the head of a doubly linked list as an input and displays the element of the list. It starts by initializing a temporary pointer current to the head of the list. Then it iterates through the list by repeatedly moving the current pointer to the next node until it reaches the end of the list that is null. During each iteration it prints the value of current node and finally it prints null to indicate the end of the list. Now coming to the main function in which we have created three nodes using create node function which contains the value 1, 2 and 3. Then the nodes are connected to form the doubly linked list. Next of the head node is pointing to the second node. Previous of the second node is pointing to the head node. Next of the second node is pointing to the third node and previous of the third node is pointing to the second node. And finally the display function is called with the head pointer to display the doubly linked list. Now we will try to execute this code. Here we can see that the output is 1, 2 and 3. So we have understood the basics of doubly linked list. Now let us look into the operations of doubly linked list. You can perform insertion, deletion and traversal operations on doubly linked list. Let us first talk about insertion operations. First, insertion at the beginning means to insert the element at the beginning of list. Then insertion at end means to insert at the end of the list and finally insertion after given position means to insert the element at the specified position. Let us execute simple code for better understanding. This function insert at beginning inserts a new node with the given data at the beginning of a doubly linked list. It takes a pointer to the head of the list as a parameter. If the list is empty, that is head is null, it sets the new node as the head, otherwise it updates the previous and next pointer to insert the node at the beginning. Over here we have a insert at end function. This function inserts a new node with the given data at the end of a doubly linked list. It takes a pointer to the head of the list as a parameter. Then we are creating a new node pointer using create node function which have already created. Now we are checking whether head is equal to null. If it is equal to null, then we are assigning the head to the new node. After that, to store the current value, we are creating a pointer named current and storing the value of head into it. Just like that we have done previously. We will run a while loop until the next is not equal to null and we will keep setting the value of current as the next when the next is equal to null, we will update the next of current to the new node and previous of the new node to current. Now we have a insert after function which takes pointer previous and integer data type as an argument. If previous node is null, it prints previous node cannot be null after we have created a new node using create node function. Here in the next of new node, the next of previous node is stored. After that in the next of previous node the new node is stored and here in the previous of new node previous node is stored. If next of new node is not equal to null the value of new node is stored in the previous of next of new node. 
Now here in the main function we initialize an empty doubly linked list with a null head. Then we insert node with data 1 at the beginning, 3 at the end and 2 after the head. And finally we display the contents of the doubly linked list. Now let's run this code and see the output. Since we inserted 1 at the beginning, 2 after the head and 3 at the end, therefore we can see this output that is 1, 2 and 3. After this we have a deletion operation. First deletion at the beginning means to delete the element at the beginning of list. Then deletion at end means to delete at the end of the list and finally deletion after a given position means to delete the element at a specified position. Now let's execute a simple code for better understanding. This function delete at end is used to delete the last node from the doubly linked list. It first check if the list is empty that is if pointer head is equal to null and if so prints a message and returns. If head of next is equal to null it means there is only one node in the list and it frees the memory and set the head to null. Otherwise, it traverses the list to find the second to last node, update the pointers to remove the last node and freeze the memory of the last node. For that, we have created a temporary pointer current to the head of the pointer. If the next of next of current that is the second last node is not equal to null, then we update the value of current to next of current. And finally, we are deleting the last node using the temporary pointer temp. Now we will try to execute this code. This is the output before deletion and this is the output after deletion. We can see that the last node is deleted which contains the value 5. And finally, we have a traversal operation. In this operation, we visit each and every node at least once, maybe to display all the data elements or to perform operations on it. We will illustrate this practically with the help of code. This function display reverse list is used to traverse and print the doubly linked list in reverse order. It takes pointer to head as a parameter. It starts by initializing a temporary pointer current to the head of the list. Then it iterates through the list if current is not equal to null and next of current it is also not equal to null then we update the value of current to the next of current. Then it iterates through the list in reverse printing each node's data. It also end with null to indicate the end of the reverse list. Now we will try to execute this code. Here we can see it displays the list and then traverse and display the list in reverse order. So that's all for today. Great job everyone. We have covered a lot in this video about doubly linked list and I hope now we have much clear understanding of how they work and why they are important in programming. Before we wrap up, a quick reminder. Don't forget to enable the subscribe button and ring notification bell so that you won't miss any updates from our team. Just a quick info guys, IntelliPath offers full stack web developer course in collaboration with ENICT Academy IIT Guwahati. Through this course, you can learn everything from front end web development to back end web development from esteemed IIT Guwahati faculties and industry experts. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out the testimonials on our Achievers channel whose link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your career to new heights. So visit the course page link given below in the description and take a first step towards career growth in the field of web development.